The following Saturday, there was a carnival atmosphere in the warm spring sunshine at Upton Park as the Addicts played host to Leicester City. The Midlands squad brought 10,000 travelling fans with them, all anxious to see their team get another three points to secure their chances of automatic promotion. The huge turnout from Leicester swelled the Upton Park gate to give a bumper crowd of almost 15,500. In fact, the away terraces became so crowded that some Leicester fans had to be led across the pitch to the famous chicken run below the East Stand. Once again, here's our commentator, Steve Dixon. Well, you could have been forgiven for thinking it was FA Cup final day here at Upton Park. It is, in fact, a Barclays League second division fixture between Charlton Athletic and Leicester City. But it is a fixture that could decide so much. Leicester City need a win and need Middlesbrough to drop points this afternoon to confirm their return to Division 1. Charlton need a win to maintain their drive for the playoff positions. We'll look first at the Charlton side as usual. It is very similar to the team that drew 1-1 with Port Vale on Tuesday. The only change being Robert Lee returns to the side at number 7. Carl Lieburn drops out due to that groin injury. And David White, therefore, will pick up the number 9 shirt. Steve Brett, the Charlton player coach, is on the bench yet again. He's the man, of course, that's called that vital equaliser at Vale. And he's joined on the bench by Steve Gatting, who came on at substitute at Sunderland recently, but hasn't played in the first team for a number of weeks. Looking across to the Leicester City side, this is the team that beat Cambridge 2-1 in midweek in a vital fixture at Filbert Street. That game at Filbert Street was a full house. There were 2,000 locked out. And indeed, many of those Leicester City fans have made a journey south this afternoon and they're here at Upton Park making it a fantastic atmosphere. The game has been held up for 10 minutes so that all the Leicester City supporters could be seated and accommodated in the standing areas in the East Stand and indeed the South Bank as well. It is a fantastic atmosphere and we're underway here at Upton Park. Charlton Athletic wearing red shirts, white shorts and red socks are kicking from right to left, attacking the South Bank end where a large number of Leicester fans are and Leicester wearing blue shirts, blue shorts and blue socks are kicking from left to right, attacking Bob Bowlers who is defending that North Bank goal where the Charlton fans are situated. Their away form is very good. They've won nine away games this season, Leicester. Not as many perhaps as Charlton, but certainly an impressive figure. Now Lee, and now Nelson taking over. What can Nelson do? Can he get the ball into the box? Pardew's arriving, and the ball comfortably in the arms of Kevin Paul. He took a deflection off Mike Whitlow. I thought it might have bounced around Pardew. But that's Charlton's first purposeful attack of the afternoon. Now, Robert Lee, can he get in? He can. And the free Scott Minto on the left-hand side. And Minto can make ground in possession. Now it's with Walsh. Nelson the further down the line. But Grayson with the tackle for Leicester. Concedes the throw. David White comes to collect. Back to Minto. Bumstead takes over. Now Walsh. Quickly closed down by Thompson. Minto escapes from Gary Mills. And does so again. He's got plenty of... And now Nelson with a chance. Can he get in there? Nelson. The tackle from Steve Walsh. Now, Stuart Barmer will take the free kick for Charlton. Everybody in the Leicester half of the field, barring Bob Boulder and Barmer, who's about to take the kick. Plenty of men in that penalty area. And can Webster get up now? And it might fall for Nelson. He's got the shot in. It was blocked. Oldfield with the header. Walsh gets a foot in. And they haven't got it clear yet. Webster gets up. Bumstead could get in here. And now, Ormondroid for G. And Leicester can break. And the man out on this far side is Steve Thompson. Oldfield wants it back again. G in the inside right position. It's a good ball inside for Mills. Popping up all over the place, Gary Mills. Whitlow. Forward for G. Wright gets the ball in low. And Whitlow going to the line, but couldn't keep it under control. And it will be a goal kick. Ball and nicely for Robert Lee. Robert Lee caught in two minds, but finds Darren Pitcher. Down the line for David White. Oldfield goes to close him down. Can White get away from David Oldfield? He's worked a chance to cross and he's worked a corner for Charlton on that far side of the field. 
Charlton's second corner of the game. So Colin Walsh to take the corner. It's short to Lee. What can Lee do? Cuts inside on his left foot. Drive coming in. He scores! Robert Lee has scored for Charlton. And Charlton take the lead. Robert Lee, who passed the fitness test not two hours before the kickoff, found the gap at Kevin Poole's near post. And Charlton take the lead after 41 minutes of this game here at Upton Park. It has to be said, it's been against the run of play. But the Charlton fans in that North Bank and in that West End won't be complaining because it's Charlton Athletic 1, Leicester City 0. Now Bumstead. Bumstead finds Walsh and Charlton can break clear. Minto's got a lot of space on this left-hand side. Minto for Charlton. Walsh on the overlap, is he? Not really. And Minto tries to squeeze it through that gap. Been upended and Grayson brings it away now. And now Mills. Webster just got a foot in and it was enough. And now Colin Walsh for Charlton. It's what? And now he's Colin Walsh has got to go on his own. And now he's found Minto. Minto one on one. What can he do? Minto's been boxed in rather. Oh, he's shown some tricks there. He's gone over. And referee Axel not impressed. And Charlton had a good break on there. Again, all the activity is centred around that Leicester City 18 yard line. Pardew at the far post is calling for it, and indeed that's where Stuart Palmer's aimed the kick. Now towards Alan Pardew, gets the ball into the box. Nelson's in here. Oh, couldn't quite get a contact on that, and if he had, I'm sure he would have broken his duck there, Gary Nelson. But Paul pouncing it quickly, and Charlton suddenly have looked a lot more lively in these last few minutes. But certainly Leicester look rattled after conceding that goal in the 41st minute of this game. They've had an awful lot of possession, Leicester City. Very few opportunities, as we said but I don't think they expected to be behind at this stage. Cleared by Walsh. Pitcher with the header. Now Walsh has got time. Gets the ball in towards Pardew. He's laid it off towards White, and White's going through! White's in now! And White has scored! It's 2-0 for Charlton! And Charlton have been left with a double blow! Two goals in four minutes! And Charlton has a 2-0 lead! And that has silenced the roar of at least 10,000 Leicester City fans. And David White, on loan from Crystal Palace, has scored his second goal in the red shirt of Charlton Athletic. And it is in stoppage time at the end of this first half. And Charlton have a two-goal lead. And that is the last kick of the first half. David White puts Charlton 2-0 into the lead with absolutely the last kick of the first 45 minutes. And Charlton go in with the cheers of their supporters ringing in their ears. The half-time score here at Upton Park. It's Charlton Athletic 2, Leicester City 0. Steve Thompson will take the corner as City attack that South Bank end, which is packed to the rafters with Leicester supporters. Now, Aldroyd gets up, and Oldfield couldn't get it back in, and they've got to get it away, Charlton. And there's all over the place, both sides. It comes out to Oldfield. Charlton can't yet relax. Down the line for Tommy Wright. Farmer goes across and gets the tackle in, but Wright skips past him and gets the crossover. And Pitcher with the header away. The ball in again towards Ormond Droid. And Ormond gets up, but Boulder is there. I'm sure that, that means that Charlton will be saving Robert Lee for Tuesday night's game against Cranmere. They've patched him up and stuck him out this afternoon and he's done a terrific job. And there goes White. And I said that Charlton could cause Leicester problems in this area. And look at the pace of David White. And he's away. And, well, I can't really believe what's happened there. White was away. He's beaten the man. Was about to play the ball across goal. And the referee decides that that will be a free kick. It's a curious decision to say the least. But Charlton will try and profit from it. Nelson off the post! I don't believe it, Gary Nelson. And it's been asked once or twice in these last few weeks, what does Gary Nelson have to do to score? Thompson to take it. Swung in towards the far post. G is up at the far post. Ball gets up. And Steve Britt got it clear. Good touch from Britt and White working hard. Look at that from David White. 
Grayson and Nelson getting to him and White getting to him but he finds Mills and Mills just got clear of Grit and Thompson got clear of Thompson in towards G and Webster with a firm tackle but it falls to Mills and Steve Grit lays out David Oldfield with his clearance and there's legs and arms everywhere and Mills goes over and the referee wants to play on and there goes White and he's been obstructed and Charlton really would lot rather avoid giving away these free kicks because every time they do it means that the ball is going to be pumped back down their throats again in that last third of the field and again this time it's Hill with a free kick Farmer gets up and gets a good header Grit gets in with a valuable tackle Minto forward to White lovely layoff to Walsh and there goes Nelson I thought he had been held by Hill Nelson couldn't reach this you know and look at that that's great pace from Nelson Colin Walsh backing him up Nelson across to White you can find Steve Grit. Oh, I'd say it was neither a cross nor a shot, but Charlton had men forward. Darren Pitcher made a great run from right back. Good header away from Darren Pitcher. And now Nelson up towards David White. And White's worked tirelessly again this afternoon. As has Nelson. There goes Nelson. And Nelson can find him. Nelson going down on goal. Good challenge. Good challenge and Adam Pardew is furious. We're into the last minutes of the scheduled 90. But plenty more time to be played, I believe. Minto couldn't get in there. Thompson can bring it away now. Platnow is the man on the left hand side. Bumstead clears into touch. Russell knocks it forward, Ormond Droid. And the referee has given a penalty. I can't believe it, he's given a penalty. So we are going to have late drama here at Upton Park after all. I suspect it will be against possibly Barmer or maybe Webster for holding down Ian Ormond Droid. One thing is for certain is that we are into stoppage time. The penalty will, of course, have to be taken. But there is plenty of time, I believe, to be added on. So there's going to be late drama here at Upton Park. Mills versus Boulder. He saved it! He saved it! And Bob Boulder! Is that the save that puts Charlton in the playoffs? And the celebrations have begun on the North Bank. It was a guilt edge opportunity for Gary Mills. He's already scored a penalty this season against Sunderland a few weeks ago, a vital penalty. But Bob Boulder saved his second penalty in, in, penalty in a row. Mike Whitlow will take the throw. He's had three minutes of time added on. And Mills and Pardew gets a tackle in, but Russell in possession now. This has got to be their last chance to get it forward. It's with Thompson. Flat now on the overlap, into the box, it's with Walsh. Walsh, and now Walsh should try again, and he's stumbling through on goal, and it's wide from Steve Walsh. Well, I never. It's been absolutely astonishing last five minutes, there's no doubt about that. And referee David Axel, waves play on. Three and a half minutes of stoppage time have already been played as Bob Boulder takes the free kick, the goal kick for Charlton. Bumpster gets it forward. We've had one, we've had four minutes of stoppage time and we're not going to have any more. The game is over and Charlton has secured a famous victory here at Upton Park. And my God, did they have to work for it. The final score here at Upton Park after a fantastic um, and enthralling afternoon football and absorbing afternoon's entertainment. It's Charlton Athletic 2, Leicester City 0. Afterwards, Steve Dixon discussed the match with John Bumstead. John, what's the feeling in the dressing room after that uh, result? Well, we're pleased, obviously, with the result, but most of the other teams won. We were banking on a few of them 
drawing or, or losing. It looks like it's going to go to the last game. Makes it all, all important on Tuesday night, doesn't it, against Trent? Yeah, it'll be a difficult game Tuesday. I, I can't see the atmosphere being anything like it was today. Although the, most of them were Leicester supporters, it, it still made a, a good atmosphere. Was it almost as if you were playing an away game? Um, I suppose so, yeah. I mean, there's not much noise at Upton Park usually. I suppose it was, yeah. Of course, our away form has been that, that so much good. It's probably probably a good thing, really, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, we knew we had to we had to win today, especially the way the other results have gone. So, you know, we're pleased with that. Player manager Steve Grit also shared his thoughts on the game. Steve, a terrific result this afternoon, but of course, you've got to do it all again on Tuesday. Yes, yeah, by all accounts, all the other teams have won as well. Um, but it's something I've said before that you, you can't rely on them all the time. We've got to make sure we do it ourselves. What's the situation with the uh, injured players? Scott, uh, sorry, Roberts uh, come off with his, uh, but he's not feeling too bad. Um, obviously, it was bad enough for him to come off, and he didn't really want to aggravate it. Um, being two 0 up obviously helped the situation. Um, well, she's, I think, it's, it's once again his old injury, and I think it was just uh, just playing him up. So it was a question of getting a fresh pair of legs on and uh, pushing Scott in. What about Carl Lieburn? Are we <coughs> going to see him this season? Do you think? Well, we're hopeful. If uh, if he doesn't make Tuesday, then he'll definitely make next Saturday. Mm -hmm. With a bit of luck, anyway. It's going to go right to the wire. So the so the pundits are telling us. Uh... Yes, well, it looks that way now. Um, I mean, it could have been. We could have been virtually halfway there, more or less there today. But uh, as I said, you know, we've got to do it again Tuesday. And uh, if we can produce a performance like that on Tuesday, then uh, hopefully it all goes well. I mean, second spot is still up for grabs. I mean, it might be a bit unrealistic, but uh, with Leicester losing, I and mean, there's still a, a clutch of clubs that could get. <coughs> well, yeah. I mean, if uh, if everyone loses and we win our two games. Uh, you never know. Stranger things have happened in football, but uh, at the moment we'll concentrate on the on the Tranmere game. Um, unfortunately, there the probably won't be the atmosphere that there was today, but uh, hopefully we'll get uh, a lot of people there to cheer us on and get the result with a bit of that. Just like to go back to last Tuesday and uh, what must have been a memorable moment for yourself. The first goal in uh, some three and a half years, I believe. Yes, I think the last one I scored was uh, when I was at Warsaw. Um, I managed to get one in the short time I was there. And I think the last time I scored for Charlton was against QPR, I think it was in 1988 in December. But, uh, you know, it, it, I remember them quite easily because they're so few and far between that uh, they're quite easy to remember. But, uh, no, it was a, obviously it was an important goal for the club and a, a good point in the end of the night because we didn't play very well. And a lap of honour or of some sort almost prompted from, from yourself. Right. Yes, yes. I mean, one of the lads like, saying, open the gates and let him out, you know. <laughs> I'd have probably run all the way back to Charlton. But, uh, as I said, I don't get the chance to do it that often, so I was going to make the most of it. Steve Dixon also spoke to Charlton keeper Bob Boulder. Bob, another crucial penalty save this afternoon. Yeah, I suppose it was, but it's only the last couple of minutes. But, um, yeah, uh, I've not saved one for a while, and I've saved two in a row. So. Must be quite pleased with that. Yeah, obviously, yeah. yeah it's nice to have a clean sheet. But I don't really think they deserve to score, so, uh, you know, it's nice to get a clean sheet. It struck me as being a rather dubious penalty in the first place, actually. Yeah, I don't, you know, referees are referees, really, sort of thing, but um, he give it straight away for, I don't know what the reason was for, but um, I suppose he's, he's been looking for something like that all afternoon, and, you know, he wasn't one of the best referees, but uh, luckily we got a clean sheet, that's the In contrast to the penalty you said at Portsmouth, um, which was quite a well-struck penalty, that one from Gary Mills was a bit weak, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't, I don't think he looked really too confident when he put the ball down, and, uh, you know, his last two penalties hit one to the right and hit one to the left, so... I had a feeling he'd probably go to his favourite side, which is probably his right. And so you, st you study the kickers, the penalty kickers the other team? Uh, no, it's just uh, Alan Kirby who said before the game that he watched them twice and he, he saw them like both penalties, and that was it really. The victory over Leicester was not enough on its own to secure Charlton a place in the playoffs. Some of the other teams tussling near the top also had victories that affected the Addicts' position in the table. Blackburn Rovers, Cambridge United, Middlesbrough and Derby all had wins, leaving Charlton in sixth place with 71 points.